In our previous lesson, we introduced you to Q data structure. We talked about Q as abstract data type or ADT. As we know, when we talk about a data structure as abstract data type, we define it as a mathematical or logical model. We define only the features or operations available with the data structure and do not go into implementation details. In this lesson, we are going to discuss possible implementations of Q. I will do a quick recap of what we have discussed so far. A queue is a list or collection with this restriction, with this constraint that insertion can be performed at one end that we call rear of queue or tail of queue and deletion can be performed at other end that we call the front of queue or the head of queue. An insertion in queue is called enqueue operation. A deletion is called dequeue operation. I have defined QADT with these four operations that I have written here. In an actual implementation, all these operations will be functions. Front operation should simply return the element at front of Q. It should not remove any element from the Q. Is empty should simply check whether Q is empty or not. And all these operations must take constant time. NQ, DQ or looking at the element at front. The time taken for any of these operations must not depend upon a variable like number of elements in Q or in other words time complexity of all these operations must be big O of 1. Okay so let's get started. We are saying that a Q is a special kind of list in which elements can be inserted or removed one at a time and insertion and removal happen at different ends of the Q. We can insert an element at one end and we can remove an element from the other end. Just the way we did it for stack, we can add these constraints or extra properties of Q to some implementation of a list and create a Q. There are two popular implementations of Q. We can have an array based implementation and we can have linked list based implementation. Let's first discuss array based implementation. Let's say we want to create a queue of integers. What we can do is we can first create an array of integers. I have created an array of 10 integers here. I have named this array A. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this array to store my queue. What I'm going to say is that at any point some part of the array starting an index marked as front till an index marked as rear will be my Q. In this array, I'm showing front of the queue towards left and rear towards right. In earlier examples, I was showing front towards right and rear towards left. Doesn't really matter. Any side can be front and any side can be rear. It's just that an element must always be added from rear side and must always be removed from front. So if at any stage a segment of the array from an index marked as front till an index marked as rear is my queue and rest of the positions in the array are free space that can be used to expand the queue to insert an element to NQ we can increment rear so we will add a new cell in the queue towards rear end and in this cell we can write the new value element to be inserted can come to this position. I'll fill in some values here at these positions. So we have these integers in the queue and let's say we want to insert number 5. To insert we will increment rear. Of course there should be an available cell in the right, an available empty cell in the right and now we can write value 5 here. After insertion new rear index is 7 and the value at index 7 is 5. Now dequeue means we must remove an element from front of the queue. In this example here a dequeue operation should remove number 2 from the queue. To dequeue we can simply increment front because at any point only the cells starting front till rear are part of my queue. By incrementing front I have discarded index 2 from the queue and we do not care what value lies in a cell that is not part of the queue. When we will include a cell in the queue, we will override the value in that cell anyway. So just incrementing front is good enough for the queue operation. Let's quickly write pseudocode for whatever we have discussed so far. 
in my code i will have two variables named front and rear and initially i'll set them both as minus one let's say for an empty queue both front and rear will be minus one to check whether queue is empty or not we can simply check the value of front and rear and if they're both minus one we can say that q is empty i just wrote is empty function here minus one is not a valid index for an empty q there will be no front and rear in our implementation we are saying that we will represent empty state of q by setting both front and rear as minus one now let's write the nq function nq will take an integer x as argument there will be a couple of conditions in NQ. If rear is already equal to maximum index available in array A, we cannot insert or NQ an element. In such scenario, we can re return and exit. I would rather use a function named isFull to determine whether Q is full or not. If Q is already full, we can't do much. We should simply exit. Else if Q is empty, we can add a cell to the queue. We can add cell at index zero in the queue. And now we can set the value at index rear as x. In all other cases, we can first increment rear and then we can fill in value x at index rear. I can get the statement a rear equal x outside these two conditional statements because it's common to them. So this is my nq function. In the example array that I'm showing here, let's NQ some integers. I'll make calls to NQ function and show you the simulation in the figure here. Let's say first I want to insert number two in the queue. I'm making a call to NQ function, passing number two as argument. The queue is empty, so we will set both front and rear as zero. Now we will come to this statement. We will write value two at index zero. So this is my queue after one NQ operation front and rear of the queue is same. Let's make another call to NQ. This time I want to insert number five. This time queue is not empty, so rear will be incremented. We have added a cell to the queue by incrementing rear, and now we will write the value five at the new rear index. Let's NQ one more number. I have NQ'd seven. Let's now write the queue operation. There will be a couple of cases in the queue if the queue is already empty, we cannot remove an element. In this case, we can simply print or throw an error and return or exit. There will be one more special case. If the queue has only one element, in this case, front and rear will not be minus one, but they will both be equal because we are already checking for minus one case in is empty function in the previous if. In this else if, we can simply check whether front is equal to rear or not. If this is the case, our DQ will make the queue empty. And to mark the queue as empty, we need to set both front and rear as minus one. This is what we had said, that we will represent an empty queue by marking both front and rear as minus one. In default or normal scenario, we will simply increment front. We should really be careful about corner cases in any implementation. That's where most of the bugs come. Okay, so this finally is my DQ function. In this example here, at this stage, let's say we want to perform a DQ. Q is not empty and we do not have only one element in the queue. So we will simply increment front. Before incrementing, we could set the value in this cell at index zero as something, but the value in a cell that is not part of Q anymore doesn't really matter. At this stage, it doesn't really matter what we have at index zero or index three or any other index apart from the segment between front and rear. When we will add a cell in the queue, we will override the value in that cell anyway. Let's now perform some more enqueues and dequeues. I'm enqueuing three and then I'm enqueuing one. With each enqueue, we are incrementing rear. I just performed some more enqueue here. Now let's perform a dequeue. If I'll perform one more in queue here, rear will be equal to maximum index available in the array. Let's enqueue one more. Now at this stage, we cannot enqueue an element anymore because we cannot increment rear. Enqueue operation will fail now. There are two unused cells right now, but with whatever logic we have written, 
we cannot use these two cells that are in the left of front. In fact, this is a real problem as we will decue more and more all the cells left of front index will never be used again. They will simply be wasted. Can we do something to use these cells? Well, we can use the concept of a circular array. Circular array is an idea that we use in a lot of scenarios. The idea is very simple. As we traverse an array, we can imagine that there is no end in the array. From 0 we can go to 1, from 1 we can go to 2 and finally when we will reach the last index in the array, like in this example when we are at index 9, the next index for me is index 0. We can imagine this array something like this. Remember this is only a logical way of looking at the array. In circular interpretation of array, if I am pointing to a position and my current position is i, then the next position or next index will not simply be i plus 1. It will be i plus 1 modulo the number of elements in array or the size of array. Let's say n is the number of elements in array. Then the next position will be i plus 1 modulo n. The modulo operation will get us the remainder upon dividing by n for any i other than n minus 1. This modulo operation will not have any effect but for i equal n minus 1 next position will be n modulo n which will be equal to 0. When you divide a number by itself the remainder is 0. Previous position in circular interpretation of array will be i plus n minus 1 modulo n. We could simply say i minus 1 modulo n just to make sure this expression inside the parenthesis is always positive. I'm adding n here. Give this some thought. You should be able to get why it should be i plus n minus 1 modulo n. Now with this interpretation of array we can increment rear in an NQ operation as long as there is any unused cell in the array. I'm going to modify functions in my pseudo code now. Is empty will remain the same. We are still saying that for an empty queue front and rear will be minus 1. Let's scroll down and come to NQ. Now in circular interpretation I will call my queue full when the position next to rear in circular interpretation that we will calculate as rear plus 1 modulo n will be equal to front. So we will have a situation like this. Right now the next position to rear in circular interpretation is front. So there is no unused cell. The complete array is exhausted. Nothing will change in this condition. If q is empty we can simply set front and rear as 0. In the last else condition we will increment rear like this we will say rear is equal to rear plus 1 modulo n where n is number of elements in the array. With this much change my nq function is good. Now let's make a call to nq and insert something in this array here. I want to insert number 15. We will come to this last else condition. Rear right now is 9 so this expression will be 9 plus 1 modulo n. n is 10 here. The size of this array a is 10 here. This will evaluate to 0. Now my new rear is 0. I will write number 15 here. Let's now see what we need to do in the q function. Nothing will change in the first two conditions. If q is already empty or if there is only one element in the q, we will handle these cases in same manner. In the final else when we are incrementing front, we need to increment it in a circular manner. So we will say front equal front plus 1 modulo n where n is number of elements in the array total number of elements in the array or size of array. Now let's perform a DQ. We will come to this condition front right now is 2 so this will be 2 plus 1 modulo 10. One more cell is available to us now. This much is the core of our implementation. Front operation will be really straightforward. We simply need to return the element at front index. Here also we first need to check whether q is empty or not. We should return a front only when front is not equal to minus 1. All these operations, all these functions that I have written here will take constant time. Their time complexity will be big O of 1. We are performing simple arithmetic and assignments in the functions and not doing anything costly like running a loop. So time taken will not depend upon size of q or some other variable. I leave this here. It should not be very difficult converting this pseudo code to a running program in a language of your choice. If you want to see my code, you can check the description of this video for a link. Thanks for watching.